Thank you. It's good to be here in Latvia. And uh, just to start, I'm like really curious, like uh, raise your hands, please. Who of you use ChatGPT daily, every single day? I'm just like wondering what the rest of the people do. Have you heard the term singularity? Okay, so I'll introduce the term singularity. Basically, basically with the pace where AI is developing right now, uh, we're into ever increasing pace of innovation. Uh, just a couple of years ago, almost nobody heard of ChatGPT. Right now, everybody uses that, at least in this audience. And if the pace is developing, uh, there is a theory that says, look guys, uh, if AI is developing at that pace, if a humankind took 2000 years roughly to invent a better version of a human, for the current generation of AI, it will take um, five-ish years to develop even a better version of themselves. And that went to take like quantum computers, et cetera, like a couple months to develop Gen 3 and so on and so on. And we're looking into future where basically human no longer understand what's going on because everything is handled by AI. And that future might be coming uh, actually pretty shortly, like in five to 10 years based on most predictions. And uh, from human perspective, that's why the term singularity, everything is gonna change. It's like you're gonna like wake up 2nd of January, just to realize that the world around you is like totally different, like totally different. Nothing like uh, humankind ever seen before. So that's what is called singularity. Similar to physics, a point of no return, a point where something happens where like nobody understands what's beyond that and how to adopt their life to that. Uh, so today, just a little introduction, like what leads the humans to singularity, and maybe a couple of thoughts, idea, trends that already are like voicing themselves louder and louder, like what happens with a society, with humans, uh, with technology, with economy, when we do hit that point, because a lot of aspects that we take for granted are like no longer there. So a little intro, like five-ish minutes into, into the history of humankind and what we achieved and where we're heading and why do we feel that right now, like right now, 25 is the year to discuss the most important principles of how we live, what we live, uh, how we will live afterwards. Everything starts approximately half a million years ago when the human became human as we know it. And uh, it's called the survival age very simply because the only one task that the human was supposed to do is to survive. So survival skills, like how you physically find food and make sure that the food doesn't find you. That's it. That was 500,000 years ago. Now, scrolling the time, 5,000 years ago, it became an age of work. The humankind realized, hey, like I can do a little bit more than just uh, hunt uh, and make sure I'm not hunting myself. Uh, I want to build things. I want to work, I want to produce, I want to invent. So the work age required physical skills. Because technology apparently didn't exist as we know it today. And the humans were like focused on just like physically being strong, uh, possessing some basic skills. Uh, and building things around them, like the cities and, you know, like early energy infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. So 500,000, just 5,000. I'm specifically highlighting the time points because it does show the pace of acceleration. And scrolling down now to 50 years ago, again, 500,000, 5,000, 50 years ago, uh, officially we announced the age of knowledge. So parents started to ask kids to go to university, get the university degree, get the diploma, because they said, look, unless you have a diploma, you're not going to have a well-paid job and you're not going to do well in life because you must be intelligent and you must be creative because these are the skills that are required for the age of knowledge. And we successfully lived in that age of knowledge for the last like 50 years. Uh, apparently, we've seen the rise of computers, the rise of internet, the rise of other things, and uh, right now, when AI is coming and saying, hey guys, you thought 
like five-ish years ago, you thought that the human is the most intelligent and the most creative being on the planet. And now think twice, because I'm the AI coming and no longer you, a human, are most intelligent. I think that nobody probably questions that part already right now. The other thing, which was quite surprisingly, the AI became more creative. So apparently you've heard of uh, uh, things like uh, Mid Journey, of uh, uh, Sora, and other creative vehicles, where the human realized, ah, uh, not most intelligent, not too much creative. Uh, it's very apparent that every single aspect that human does in those areas will be taken over, a uh, matter of time. So, uh, we started to think around and say, hey, like, uh, what do we do in life? Like, do we really just like leave all the jobs to AI? Do we like give up? Uh, uh, what's our purpose? What's driving us? What are we as a society? So the talks began about how do we build a wisdom society? And what are the principles that are driving the wisdom society? And apparently a very natural question is uh, very simple. Like, why the heck do we care? Like, why do we need to change anything at all? Because uh, we build houses, we build uh, technology, we build uh, energy, we build communication. Uh, we enjoy things in life as we think. So why do we need to change anything at all? Uh, and here are just like a couple points to think about. First, about 10-ish years ago, a lot of politicians and economists realized that building wealth or GDP or GDP per capita or income just does not make people more happy. Just doesn't. Probably you've heard of this like reverse phenomena. Actually, if you dig a, a little bit into the data, it suggests that the wealthier a country is, in fact, the less happy people are. And that doesn't sound right. Like, why would we just care about building wealth, uh, things, uh, services, products, like this iPhone, next iPhone, the Tesla, the house, the grill, the summer house? Why do we need all of that if that does not make feel us happier? In fact, it makes us feel unhappier. And these are some facts that are, like, really troubling. So first, if you take, a, like, a very well, like, a most advanced economy on the planet, America, the U.S., uh, you would realize that every one out of six citizens, including kids and all guys, takes antidepressants every single day. One out of six. Crazy. 80% of Americans say they are unmotivated in their work. That's crazy. Like people spend most of their life on sleeping time at work. And 80% of those people are unmotivated. They don't like what they do. They simply do it because uh, they're getting paid, because they need to buy things. As somebody said, people are funny beings because they uh, borrow the money that they don't have to buy things that they don't need to impress the people they don't care about. So why in hell do that? 61% uh, of Americans want to quit their job at the first opportunity. So, uh, so what happens is, uh, on the one hand, uh, people are saying, hey, like, uh, we are scared as hell that AI will take our job. On the other hand, they say, but we don't like the job anyway. So, so uh, is it only me or you also see a paradox, like, why in hell we struggle so much giving up something that we don't like anyway? But that's a rhetorical question. And uh, what's instead? Anybody of you have heard the term called happiness economy? Okay, a couple of hands. Uh, so for the rest, I will explain. This is what's coming next. So when people realize that building a traditional economy, and I will uh, highlight that currently every single one country, uh, the biggest objective is to build GDP per capita. For every single politician, starting from top uh, to the very bottom, that's the one most single biggest driver for any economy, building GDP, building wealth, building product, building income. Uh, and not making people happy, as we saw that. So the happiness economy is about making people happy. And there are like some principles. One is first time ever, uh, people realized economy may not need people. If AI is capable of building actually everything around us, 
So maybe, maybe those 80%, 61%, maybe uh, they can do something else in life, something that does motivate them, something for society, something for personality, something for their family, something for themselves. So the society becomes uh, very, very differently driven. Uh, the one process which is currently actually is developing for the society is to remove the central centralized model and replace it with decentralized. Everybody of you probably have heard of how blockchain, Bitcoin, etc. works. Not a single human and no central bank, no government printing money. Everything is flat based on the code. So there are like a lot of opinions that you can run with society the same way. So you do not concentrate the power in any single hands because concentrating power is a risk. Health. Uh, I will display some slides a little bit later how uh, humankind is moving into longevity, uh, where essentially the promise is that maybe, maybe very soon, actually there are decent chances that the human may decide to live as long as they wish, as opposed to what's been given by the nature. And education apparently becomes very different. So these are the kind of like the trends or the principles that we see being changed right now. Again, when we are given a chance to build everything basic around us, like the food, the shelter, the transport, the communication, without people. So um, apparently AI is, uh, is helping us because, because uh, it does enable producing wealth and producing products and producing everything else without people. And now a little slide. There are like a couple charts that I want to share with you. One is to the left is uh, Germany, a very successful apparently European country. And it shows two lines. One is how length of work, the labor has decreased in the last 70 years. Uh, the data ends at 2017, but the trend definitely continues. So Germans, started to work uh, 46 hours per week in their 50s. And then right now, the average, or right now, 2017, the average German worked actually 26 hours per week, while the income has increased dramatically from $4 uh, that's weighted by inflation to $66. So what does that show? Apparently that trend continues uh, uh, very, very clearly that people choose to work less and less and less and less. While, again, the efficiency of work increases uh, and the productivity goes up and up and up and up. So apparently it's very clear. Now, anybody of you have heard of a concept called basic income? Oh, okay. When it comes to money, people tend to, tend to learn things. So yeah, so basic income is a very simple concept saying, uh, and actually Sam Antman, who is behind OpenAI, who is behind ChatGPT, is one of the like strongest uh, evangelists for that saying, okay, hey, like if... Uh, if AI is producing everything, uh, how do we share the wealth? Because apparently, yes, there will be like a tech gazillionaires like Zuckerbergs and Musk and Altmans, etc. But apparently, uh, if we want the economy to work efficiently, we want to distribute the income. Uh, and apparently, because AI and humanoid robots are building the wealth, so, so apparently to people, it appears as a basic income. So the concept has arise saying, hey, like you just getting paid for doing nothing just because you're a human being. And that basic income will cover your basic needs, again, like the shelter, the transport, uh, uh, the next iPhone, et cetera, if you will. Uh, and surprisingly, uh, already right now, a lot of countries are very well prepared for that. So right is the chart where basically it shows how ready right now with the current taxation scheme, with the current uh, uh, structure, with the current technology, current economy, countries are already ready to pay basic income. And top of the chart is Denmark. Uh, again, economists say that they are can pay like approximately $11,000 per year to every single one uh, individual or citizen for doing nothing. Of course, you can choose uh, to work and do more, but uh, apparently you can at least survive already right now with that kind of money. But again, given the exponential growth, how the economy is growing, we're looking into five, 10,000 euro per month and so on and so on in the next like five to 10 years. So yes, countries are ready. Yes, we are discussing. And yes, the model is very viable. If you're interested, you can Google that. There's like, or ChatGPT that, as, as, as now I would say. So because, because uh, this is exactly where, where the economy is heading. AI produces wealth. People get basic income. People choose to do what they want as opposed to what they have. 
Uh, decentralized society, again, I'll skip uh, detailed explanations on that. Again, I already mentioned how successfully, at least technically, uh, phenomena like uh, Bitcoin or blockchains are working. To me, it's like I'm an economist, I'm a finance guy. So to me, it's like charming, charming how, how uh, technology without any single human being can work and replace completely uh, finance, traditional finances where millions of people work and so on. So uh, health and longevity is something next. So longevity is something where the medics say, hey, uh, we discovered that getting older is a sickness. So longevity is something, something where, uh, where we're heading like really close and basically uh, we're promised a world where they're saying, okay, like this is a disease, this is a sickness. Uh, we find ways how to treat that. There is like medicine for that. There is like uh, other means, but uh, we can definitely very well increase the human lifespan but also we probably can like place a point where a human can decide how long basically he or she lives. And again, like those skeptics as say, hey, like it's possible look around like uh, people are not living to their like 150s or 200s. Uh, if you look at the chart to the right, basically average lifespan uh, on the planet, you would realize that just like 100 years ago, people lived maybe a third of what they live now. And it's just been like 100 years. So definitely we're looking to change something here. Okay, education uh, is something that also uh, changes quite a lot. So now when, when the parents are saying, hey, like uh, learn stuff, so you need to be learning math and, and, and uh, other things because again, you need to get to university, you need to get a diploma, you need to get uh, education, and this is how you're gonna build your life. Uh, that part is no longer valid at all. So, Actually, I've heard a funny opinion saying, hey, like our parents taught the kids like five, 10 years ago, become a developer because programmers make most of the money, very well paid job. And if you want to succeed in life, become a programmer. Guess what? Developers and programmers are the most suffering profession right now because of AI. Because uh, right now, as of 25, approximately 95% of the code already being written by AI and the best of both and, and Zuckerberg, they say, hey, like uh, five years from now, zero code will be written by developers. So 100% AI. So guess what, how you feel if you're a developer. But again, if you look into like what's instead, like if people don't need to learn uh, uh, textbooks, encyclopedia news, uh, professions, et cetera, what's left? Like what do, we, what do we do? And education is transforming because they say, hey, like, uh, as opposed to building knowledge, we need to build character, human character, human values. So we need to develop the discipline, the focus, the attention, the ability to understand people, the ability to understand the world, the ability to use the data. And these are like very, very, very well fundamentally different skills than what's been right now. Just the message is very clear. I just like to just summarize what basically I said. So one is we're developing at extremely ever-increasing pace. Two is we're at the cusp, at the cusp of fundamentally changing the society, the economy, the laws of, of physics around us. Uh, that event is called singularity based on most experts singularity comes in the next five to 10 years. Three is uh, if we do either achieve singularity or face towards singularity, we need to rethink I think a lot of aspects and the major aspects are apparently the economy. How do we adopt as a society to the world where people don't work? AI does work. People still don't want to have life, which is fair, which is motivated because the current status quo is not okay. Not good. Nobody's speaking about that. But again, 80% uh, of people not happy about their work. That tells a lot. And aspects that are going to change apparently economy, uh, education, uh, governance as a society, and health. These are like one of the major areas, and I just gave you some highlights. Uh, what definitely we see uh, in both uh, investing finances and the technology world, where the society is at least glimpsing, and how do we change a little bit? So this is what the future might look like. Coincidentally, we're in a big hall called the Future Hall. So uh, again, if you just raised yourself some new questions that you have not been thinking about recently, uh, my mission would be completed for now. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.